This Grand Caravan is back in the shop today, but it's not a comeback. It's super cold outside, and the problem is it's really cold in the van. Like, the heat doesn't work at all. So we're going to diagnose that problem and get it fixed to get this thing back on the road and keep the people warm. Let's get it done. This car has dual climate zones, which means in the back and in the front there's a heater core, but it's very simple. It's cable operated. There's no electronics in there, so we're going to skip that and we're gonna go straight to mechanical. The easiest thing to check, let's see if there's any coolant in the radiator. So you can see way down there, there's some coolant there, but the level is really, really low. All right, the way we're gonna try and find this leak, I'm gonna put pressurized air into that cooling system, and hopefully we're gonna find a spray of air or water or something that'll show us where it's leaking. This is called a cooling system pressure tester, and this one works on shop air, but there are some that you hand pump. This way is just a little bit easier. I'm gonna charge this system to about 20 pounds of pressure. I can hear air moving. So let's leave that there. So it's been dripping right down here on the transmission bell housing. And we also have some drips up here and some bubbles. Now that, let me zoom you out. That is right there at the intake manifold, the lower intake manifold. You can see that sediment sort of piling up there and a very slow leak. Now we're under 20 pounds of pressure here and that only happens when this thing is running really hot. So at normal pressures, it's not gonna be leaking like that. You didn't hear that before I put the air in there. So this is going to be the most extreme version of the leak. And that's why we use that tester. It looks like we have two leaks here. One at the intake manifold gasket and two right here. You can see we've got this worm drive clamp and those are notorious for leaking in different seasons because they're not allowed to expand and contract like the spring type. So we're gonna try and get a spring type clamp for this upper radiator hose and also an intake manifold gasket. Let's get this torn apart, get the parts on order, get this thing fixed. That's gonna be the messy way to depressurize these cooling system pressure checkers better way remove your air hose and then open this up into a bucket and you're going to trap your coolant that way we're going to have to remove this top radiator hose from the intake so i want to get the water level down below that hose so we don't make a mess i'm just going to pull it right out of here with the evacuator All right, parts are on their way. Let's go ahead and get these hoses and everything off. We gotta get this intake out of there, but I wanna disturb as little as possible because I don't want this stuff to break. Should be an eight millimeter. got to pull the cable over here there's a split where it can come out right there like that same thing on the other side and the bracket eight millimeter again you pull this red lock tab out and then you can push down on the lock get that out of there and this one's for the brake booster let's get this power steering reservoir out of its place but be careful not to spill it I don't want to get power steering fluid all over the place let's move down over here to the throttle body we're gonna get those connectors off. There we go. 
And then we got this one down here. That was not easy. It's tough to get your hands back in there. I moved from there over to this side. You can see that this hose here has a clamp way back there. We're gonna have to pull that off also. I think we got it. That is really tight. Barely made it under this cowl here, but we got it. Reach back there with your 10 millimeter. Grab these bolts in the back first and grab the front with the air ratchet. We've got one hose underneath here we got to get off. There we go. Just pull up on it and then you can squeeze the connector to pull it off. Time to disconnect the fuel line. We're just going to push this tab in and then pull the line off. I'm using a rag to keep that gas from spraying me in the face. That wasn't so bad. I'm just gonna crack them all loose before I pull them out. So of course Chrysler put this coil pack right on top of this bolt. I don't know if you can see that or not. But I've got to move it out of the way. So I've got all of the bolts, seven of them, loosened up. This one over here is still kind of mushy and I don't want to break it. I'm going to tap it right here and just loosen up this manifold and see if that'll encourage that bolt to come out a little bit easier. Let's see what this feels like. folks doesn't feel like it wants to come out maybe if I try an impact all right I'm gonna use this impact we're gonna set it to uh, one ugga dugga here and what I'm hoping is we can just kind of give it a little bit of a massage and work that bolt out without twisting it and breaking it all right let's try setting number two see what that does Oh, yep, it broke. Well, that sucks. I think that's what happens, folks. When you get a leak in there like that, you have the possibility of these bolts rusting out. I don't think that bolt stood a chance. That was easy. Let's have a look just down here, see what kind of a pickle we're in. Now, this is where the bolt is, and you can see it right there in the mirror. It's just below the surface of that standoff. Now, this is how much of the bolt broke off. So it's barely down in there, and I can't get the intake manifold up because those bolts are going down in at an angle. So I'm gonna take a center punch and go directly in the center of that bolt and that'll be the mark where I start. And then I got to drill that out. Now, if you look at it, it broke pretty clean. It's pretty flat right there. So that's one good thing. So it's just using vice grips on the mirror here to hold it exactly where I want it. And that is the center punch. It looks pretty good. So we're going to go ahead and start drilling see if we can get that out of there. All right, I just got this right angle drill. Should be just enough room to get, just enough room to get down in there. That's what it looks like, drilling just a really clean hole right down into that bolt. And I'm missing the manifold, which is good because we're reusing this thing. Let's get these chips out of here so I can see what I'm doing. Yeah, baby. That was ridiculous, but it's out of there. Okay, here's what we got. We got a little bit of a bolt 
left right there. Hopefully I can grab onto that with some vice grips. There's all sorts of stuff we gotta clean, but it's open to the crankcase. So we'll try to not get anything down in there, but we can't be perfect. So this is gonna need an oil change before we start it. All right, folks, I've got crappy snap-on vice grips and we're just on that little bolt right there and check it out. That's right, it's turning. Let's get this thing out of here. I think we got her. No, I can't spin it with my fingers yet. Don't start celebrating too quick. You know what I don't have? It's those brand new Knifex twin grip. That would be something. It just came out and they're hard to find. I haven't picked up a pair of those yet, but these are working. Can I get it with my fingers yet? Oh yeah. Check it out. Oh, victory. Sweet victory. Give you an idea. This is the bolt that we had in there. This is the one that came out. This is how much I had to drill. And that's what's left of it. Awesome. Can't say enough good things about these Norseman bits. I would not have been able to do that with any other drill bit that I've got. These things rock. All right, this valley is all clean now, and I'm gonna use some Permatex Ultra Gray just in these corners. The corners right here between the cylinder head and the engine block, right there, 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 and here. All right, here's the brand new gasket. It's got these two rubber pads right here. That's gonna go down where that RTV is. All right, and these two bolts hold down these metal brackets here, right at the end. They're a 10 millimeter. I'm just gonna snug them up here. And the surfaces of the lower intake are clean and ready to go. Set them down carefully. You don't wanna scratch up your gasket. All right, I'm going to turn down my ratchet. I want it really slow so that I can get these bolts run in, but they're not going to be torqued at all. Just one inch pound is really all you want. And I'm going to do that in order. There we go. 200 inch pounds. Start in the middle right here and then crisscross over to the next middle one here all right now stage three of this process is to do it all over again but we're going to stay at 200 inch pounds we're just going to make sure that it's seated properly same sequence same torque, just do it again. All right, we've got a proper spring clamp for this hose now. I almost put the hose on without it. And I'll reach back here, put the heater hose back on the back side of it. Here's the bracket for that coil pack. It also holds up the power steering reservoir so we can untie that. A little bit of silicone on all the O-rings. Make sure they're lubed up. If these bolt holes don't line up, find the injector that's not seated and give it a push. We're putting these spark plug wires back where they go on the ignition coil, routing them through here so they look good. Moving over here now, let's go ahead and grab our fuel line 
connect that back to the fuel rail. Now we've got brand new upper plenum gaskets installed. And remember, we've got to hook that hose right over here. It's easier to do when you're just holding it in your hand like this. Pull it right up here. Also making sure that the surface on the lower intake is clean and free of dirt and oil. Let's go ahead and set that on there. I'm gonna make sure I move this PCV hose out of the way. All right, with these bolts, you wanna start in the middle and work your way to the outside in a crisscross pattern. Tighten these down to 105 inch pounds. That's 12 Newton meters. Moving over here, let's go ahead and replace the power steering reservoir. On this side, remember we've got two vacuum hoses. Plug that in right there. And then we've got the brake booster hose down here. Right, let's get that map sensor plugged in. And the throttle body back here. All right, here's the throttle cable bracket. And then remember right back here, we've got this PCV hose. Got to put it on top of the intake manifold on this nipple here. Let's get these throttle cables back in. Start with this one. This is cruise control first. It goes all the way to the inside. There's the throttle pedal there. That just leaves us with the air duct. Let's go ahead and put it back on the throttle body and the air box. Should be your intake air temperature sensor there. That just leaves us with this breather tube here. my habit to change the oil anytime you open the top of the engine things can fall down in there and I'd rather have that go in the trash than get circulated through the engine. All right everything's back together let's go ahead and put some fresh oil in there. All right, last step now, we're gonna fill the cooling system and I'm going to use this vacuum filler. It uses shop air to create a vacuum inside the cooling system. And then this straw will just go inside the jug and we can fill it that way. I use that for two reasons. Number one, it's got a gauge on it. And that means when I put a vacuum on there, I can watch the gauge to see if there's leaks. And number two, it'll take the air out of the system so that it'll prevent overheating or not heating inside the cabin. Go ahead and disconnect the air from it. It's my habit to watch this vacuum gauge for maybe about five minutes and make sure that it doesn't move. If not, we're good to fill it. And if it does move, we gotta find the leak. This filler is made by Robin Air. I'll leave an Amazon affiliate link down in the description if you wanna see what they look like on Amazon. See that it collapses the hoses? That's totally normal. There's a vacuum inside of there. Got our oil done. 
let's go ahead and fill this up because we have the same amount of vacuum as we did when we started here. We haven't leaked anything, so we're good to go. Just using some GO5 coolant, it's made for Chrysler. Finish it here. Okay, we're about halfway down that jug and the vacuum level is right about zero. So that's another cool thing about a tool like this. It stops when it's full and there's no guesswork there. Just gonna put this bottle down below and then I can use gravity to clear the line out here. Just a heads up, remember your spark plug routing. It's not the same as up here. That's why I was running a little rough, but you can see now it's running smooth as glass. Beautiful. So I took this opportunity to do an ignition service and fix a couple leaks on the car and the heaters fixed. So that's the most important thing here in the winter. A few months back, I also heard a little bit of a weird noise. It sounded like marbles in a blender while the engine was at idle. I fixed that concern and I did a video about it. You can click there to watch that.